Today we'll be installing the full height AFS onto the 22 GMC Sierra. This application is a drill application where you will secure the feet through the cargo rails of the truck by drilling holes and using the provided hardware to anchor it in place. The hardware kit shipped with your bed rack is not application specific and you will have some leftover nuts and bolts after you're finished with your installation. The first thing we want to do is attach a cargo foot to the base of each leg. To do that, grab hardware bag 9000.13 and a 13 millimeter ratchet wrench or socket with a ratchet. See the slots on the bottom of the leg? They correspond to the studs and the studs should face to the inside of the leg and it sits on the truck like this. So each stud's going to get a flat washer and a nylon lock nut. And then use your wrench to tighten everything into place. Once you've got all the hardware started, we're just going to push it back in the slot to keep the foot square to the leg, and then we'll tighten them all up. Once you have all your legs assembled like this, you can move and put the armor on. The short bit version is going to have two pieces of load panel armor on each side and three legs per side. You'll use bag 9000.1. That hardware will align to the holes in the legs to space the armor properly and put one side together. You can use any of the holes along the leg. Just make sure that you use the same orientation of holes across the whole way to keep the assembly square. Each one's going to get a bolt and a flat washer. Now we'll reach underneath and we'll install the nylon lock nut at each location, square it up and tighten everything up with a 13 millimeter wrench. Once you have the bolts pushed through, reach underneath and install a nylock to each stud. Push it together to close up the seam between the two armor plates and then on the top bolts, use a 13 millimeter wrench and a five millimeter Allen to tighten these guys into place.
Once you have the top one secure, use a short extension with a 13 millimeter socket and a five millimeter Allen on the outside. Once you have all six bolts installed, we'll repeat the process with the remaining parts for the other side, and then we'll talk about how to get it onto the truck. Next, we'll assemble the load bars. Take the plastic end caps provided in your hardware kit. We're gonna install one to the end of each load bar first. They'll line up to the holes, push them as far as they'll go by hand, and then just tap them in place with a mallet. On the other end, we'll install the threaded inserts and we'll put the other end caps on. Locate the bag of threaded inserts. You're gonna install them into the top row on the load bar and each one will get two per side. These lower tracks won't get any. And then you install the end cap. That keeps the threaded inserts intact so that they can't slide out the end of the load bar while you put the bed rack together. Remove the cap on the VC3 and pull the collar out of the way and then use the cap to pierce the seal on the VC3. Do not squeeze the tube. Then pull the cap off. You're gonna apply this to the last four or five threads on every one of these fasteners and allow the material to dry for 10 to 15 minutes until it's no longer sticky to the touch. I'll pre-assemble all the hardware with a lock washer and a flat washer to make this easier and not have to fumble around with the hardware in the bed of the truck. For the next step, you'll want somebody to help you hold it in place. You're gonna take one side of the assembled truss system, set it up on the ledge of the truck, And you're gonna verify that you can place it in a position where through the rail, you can get to the front and back side to install all the hardware. When you're setting the first side, this measurement doesn't really matter. You wanna try and get it as close to centered as you can while still being able to get to the backs of the hardware. Once this side's put in place, we'll measure this side against it to use it to line up the other side so that they're parallel. Next, we're gonna mark the locations where we're gonna drill. If you look at the vertical slots in the foot, we need to use the two that are closer together here in the center because they have more real estate to bite into the bed rail where we're gonna drill our holes. 
if we were to use this lower section right here, we wouldn't have that much sheet metal to use. When you're doing an AFS install, you can use any combination of these that makes the most sense. You just wanna make sure that you have plenty of surface area for the hardware to bite into so you get a secure mount. Once you have your holes marked, we're gonna remove this side from the truck and we'll use a provided drill bit to drill pilot holes through here for the hardware. We wanna stay in as much sheet metal as we can. So I'm gonna aim this one at the middle of each one of these slots. So we're gonna use an eighth inch drill bit to make a small pilot hole in the middle of each slot. And then we'll step up to the larger provided drill bit and stop collar to drill through the rest of the metal. The stop collar is here to keep it from slipping through and doing damage to the inside of the truck bed. So that's through the plastic. And that's through the metal. Plenty of surface area back here to get the hardware in and enough metal that we'll get a good bite and secure the side to the truck. Repeat the process for the remaining holes, then we'll measure and do the other side. Now we're gonna lift the side back in place and we're gonna attach it with the hardware from bags 9006 and 9014 using a five millimeter Allen and a 13 millimeter wrench. Each hardware location is gonna get a bolt with a fender washer. You'll slide that through. You'll place another fender washer on the back and you'll install the nut onto the back of the stud. And we're gonna loosely tighten these. It's the biggest oxymoron there is. We wanna snug it so that we can still move it and adjust it. We don't wanna fully tighten it at this point. And we're just trying to get it tight enough that he can let go and it'll hold itself in place. We've got one side secured. We're gonna take a tape measure and we're gonna measure from the outside of the leg to the tip of the truck bed at a easy to identify point here. I've got 14 and an eighth inches. Now that we've got the marks drawn on the passenger side of the truck, we'll use the same small eighth inch bit to pilot the holes in the center of each mark. and then use the pilot holes to step out with the larger drill bit included with your kit.
it would have looked like it was in super slow mo. assembled load bars, make sure that the threaded inserts are at the top channel, not the bottom one. Set the load bars in place inside of the legs. Slide the threaded inserts to where they'll align over top of each leg on the driver and passenger side. Now start all the hardware by hand. Now all that's left is to adjust the load bars from driver to passenger side to make sure that the gap that you have sticking out of one side of your legs matches the gap on the other. You can just push them back and forth by hand and then you'll want to rotate this and pull back on it until the top of the leg is flush with the top of the load bar and then tighten up your hardware. Once you have your load bars in place, refer to the chart at the end of this guide and torque all of the hardware to specifications.